Um, I move that bylaw number 122, a bylaw designating streets accessible to all-terrain vehicles, be now read for the third time by title in both official languages. Thank you. Seconded by Councillor Ross Robinson on the question. Uh, Councillor Ross Robinson. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, I'm very pleased that uh, this is almost gone through. Um, <laughs> very confident that it will go through. Um, I really believe that this is, uh, you know, the first step in a, in a long series of roads that I hope will become uh, accessible. Um, as everyone, it's no secret, I travel all over the place with my uh, ATV and uh, I've been all over the province and uh, I do believe that we were one of the last to get on board with this and it's, uh, it's really exciting to see it finally happen. Thanks, Councillor. Uh, this is speak from the chair as well, or first I'll have a question for the clerk. I know that we, this was delayed. We wanted to get this done quite some time ago, but we were held up because we were waiting on something to come from the province. And I just noted in, in your reading, Madam Clerk, on the last motion that it will go into effect once something happens at the province. So is that just the normal process or are we still um, waiting on delays from the province, but just put, passing these in anticipation? This was a little different. When the bylaw first came up, we sent it to the province and asked for comments, um, and they gave us comments, and we made changes to the bylaw. When those changes were incorporated and council gave first reading, we sent it off to the province again because if they come, if they do not approve it and make any changes, we will have to start over. And this time, the province refused to give us any more comments and said council would actually have to sign off on it before they would comment further on it. So it's been the, the first one we get was very uh, beneficial to us, and the second, the province would not give us a sign off before it passes, and we hope it meets the criteria. If not, there will be amendments that have to come back and essentially start over. Uh, and and so I guess maybe a follow up question in that regard. Uh, I think as we've put a lot of work into this over a number of years, and I think we're keen and the community is keen to see this go through. Do we have an anticipated timeline of? Um, when we may hear back and or when it will in, it will be enacted and and you know we're, we're hopeful soon our first experience was we sent a letter on I think a Friday and got an answer by the next Tuesday the second time we sent a letter and asked for comments it took a couple of weeks so you know I, I, hopefully it won't take longer than a couple of weeks to get a final sign off but you know it's hard for us to anticipate what the timeline is with, with Frederick but so I guess is it it's just a matter of hearing back, and if it's fine, we can sign on the dotted line and this becomes it's, active it's, or? It's, it's enacted upon approval. The minute we get approval, we will be advertising to the public okay. that the bylaw is in effect. We will get the word out and, uh, you know, both using uh, other forms of media besides our, uh, our own uh, website. Uh, we know people are waiting on this. And it changes, you know, people are going to be surprised. We understand when they first see people on the road, so everybody should get some notice when it's in effect. But, yeah, we will be advertising. Thank you. And last question. I know the Director of Recreation is not here tonight, so this might come to you as well, to the manager or to the communications officer. But as you mentioned, communication will be important because uh, things are changing, and, and it's also involving roads and road safety. Um, but will there be signage placed um, around sort of where the trails meet the roads? Or I know, for example, um, the new paved walking or multi-use trail and on the Chatham waterfront and up to Wellington, the piece from Wellington down to Water Street is for ATVs as well, but once they hit Water Street, they're, they're now going to use the road and not the waterfront paved trail. So, uh, and I, I was told that there were ATVs on the waterfront paved trail uh, this past weekend. So just to make sure that everybody knows what lane they're supposed to be in where, will there be street signage? Yes, there will. Um, oh, okay. Certainly at the crossings of the roads and to start and delineate where they can go on the roads and where they can't. Uh, Water Street, it's, you know, essentially from what we call the old power plant towards the downtown, not towards Middle Island. So we will be putting up the signage to indicate that is not uh, uh, an approved route. But yes, and we will be working with the ATV clubs. They've been very helpful in working with us on the issue of signage. So Good. yeah, we're confident yeah. that we can get Yeah, that. and in that area in particular, making sure that they're on the road, not the waterfront not trail. The waterfront trail, yeah. yeah. Great. Okay, well hopefully we'll get a quick turnaround from the province and we'll definitely keep our eyes on that.
Uh, Councillor King. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, Mike, on the trail system, is there any more movement on the, they were talking about uh, using the old Newcastle Bridge? Is there any movement on that? The old Farmer Morrissey Bridge? Yes. No, not that I know of. There's been various groups that have approached the province by time, but it appears that the reality of the condition of that bridge and the cost to refurbish to make it passable for anything uh, is prohibiting its, its development for that use. And I know of no active pursuit of the province to try and convert that into a walking or ATV bridge. I know, I know there's a safety issue there, and you talked about walking, but wouldn't it be feasible for four-wheelers, I wonder, or what? I'm not sure. Uh, yeah. It's been it's been something that's as you as the manager mentioned, it's been looked at a couple yeah. of times over the last few years, but it's never really gotten very far. And there was one review that indicated a price in the millions, I think. But then there were people that said, well, that was to take it back for cars. Um, I'll remind council that we did include it in our long-term active transportation plan. Um, that it is part of the loop that we'd like to see, the river loop, in the long term, um, but it's not one of our active or priority front end projects in that 10-year plan. So we support it, but we are not pursuing it at this time, and we're not aware of anyone else who is. Yeah. Uh, Deputy Mayor Quinn. Uh, thank you, Your Worship. I just uh, wanted to chime in here. Uh, I uh, share Councillor Ross Robinson's enthusiasm for this, and uh, we're at the finish line on this one, or almost at the finish line. And hopefully the start of uh, the other finish line for uh, further things to come. And it's been a, a long road or long trail, as it were, I guess, pun intended. And I'm happy where we are right now for this. Thank you, Deputy Mayor Quinn. Seeing nothing further, we'll call the vote. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Bylaw number 122, a bylaw designating streets accessible to all terrain vehicles. Thank you. Um, and that's uh, that's all on the special council agenda. This.